Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica Dungeons & Dragons panel here at SCG Con. I am your Dungeon Master, Jeremy Knoll. Uh, you might know me from Commander Versus. And with me today, I have four uh, chumps. Uh, yeah, that's what we'll call them. Uh, player characters. Our first player character is Gavin, and uh, he will be playing... Uh, player chump, I believe. Play, player chump. Play, play, yes. Player chump, yes. Player chump. <clears throat> today, I'm playing... Agent 26, a Demir operative, super soldier, got, a, got half a month before I'm, I expire, so I got to get in what I can while I can. Before you expire, so you are a Simic experiment? Yeah, I, I, uh, hybrid. They, it's a little bit of Demir operative, stole some Simic technology and merged with some Izzet technology and uh, created super soldiers. Now the problem is they set us with only three months to live Ooh. to make sure that to make sure that we couldn't go rogue, but uh, I've done just that. My goal is in the next 15 days of my life, figure out how to stay, make it myself a little more permanent than that. Agent 26 is on the case. All right. Uh, next up, we have Vanessa Martin, cosplayer extraordinaire. And who are you playing? Uh, my character is Vera, a, an, an elf ranger from uh, the Selesnia in, in, Initiate. I am most comfortable hiding in the forest. Ooh. I also like hiding. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get along. Next up, we have Mike Turian, who will be playing. Oh, I'm Shlomo Jr. I'm a human paladin, and I'm representing here the Boros Legion. That's, uh, and I'm ready to attack, too. <laughs> what are your thoughts on hiding? I like attacking people who hide. <laughs> and finally, making a last minute substitution due to an illness, instead of Callie Anderson, we have Stephen Green. And who are you playing? Estric. Estric? All the way up, all the way up. Estric. Uh, I'm a goblin is it engineer. Uh, I think I like to build stuff, but I do like to hide. Okay. All right, three out of four ain't bad. Goblin is it engineer. Yeah, we like to hide. It's, it's going to be an exciting... I'm it's a gonna, wizard. <laughs> I'm a wizard here. It's going, it's going to be an exciting session of us all hiding. Super exciting. Everybody hides. We're all going to hide while Mike just runs out there slashing <laughs> yes. things. And then we're like, oh, look at that adorable Mike. Charge. Good thing he's got 12 HP. So today we are playing book. a session that is actually included in the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, which is the new book from the Dungeons & Dragons line. And it is called Krenko's Way. You can find this in the book. Uh, I have modified it slightly to be a little bit more friendly for this panel but uh, you can feel free to check that out. And we are giving away copies every time somebody rolls a 20, which will be pretty much to all of you, I believe, at this point. Um, so, is everybody ready? No. No? Not yes. Ready. No? Yes. Yes? Yes? You can't hear me, I'm hiding. <laughs> yes. That's good answer. That's good how answer. we're starting yeah, this right. off. All right. right, everybody's hiding. Cool. All right. All right. Yes. Yes? You're, you're ready? Yes. Late entry. Yes. Late, late entry to the party. All right. Life in the 10th district is never dull. A hub of constant activity, it always offers a new opportunity, a new challenge, a new intrigue. It's a place where a promising adventurer like you can find your path to glory, riches, or power through your allegiance to your guild. But first, you'll need a job th that will help you prove your worth. Today is your lucky day. This afternoon, you received a brief note from an, one of your contacts. I heard today from someone who is looking for help finding something. Seems serious. Might be a good opportunity for you. Meet outside Sawtooth Prison at dusk. At the appointed time, you find yourself gathered with other like-minded individuals outside the front door to the functional and unremarkable Sawtooth Prison. And then, uh, if you would like to introduce your characters to each other. Hi, I'm Shlomo Jr. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> This, um, this very large uh, Boros human, obviously of the Boros Legion, stands there and introduces himself. With a flourish of my hand, I attempt to shake his hand. <laughs> I guess Shocking Grasp. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to let us all know what Shocking Grasp does? I think it electrocutes him. <laughs> Great. How much damage do I take? Uh, just a second, just a second. <laughs> Wonderful start to the day. I don't know. 
I'm we'll just we'll just say it's a little bit of a joy uh, yeah, of, yeah, of other. It's more of a joke. It's like a trick, you know. Oh, yeah. Trick. Yeah. Some static right. electricity. I leap down from my lofty perch on on top of Sawtooth Prison. I land gracefully like a cat because I have animal enhancement features on my character. Will you sheets. please roll me an athletics check? I absolutely. A five. <laughs> so a somewhat odd-looking simic, uh, simic, what is it? Hybrid? Simic hybrid uh, with a very obvious Demir logo on him falls to the ground in front of you in a very large lump. Nice gracefully. to meet you. Very gracefully. <laughs> very gracefully. Oh. A very graceful lump. That's my mom's name for me. Yes. <laughs> nice to make your acquaintance. You don't know who I am, but I know everything about you. <laughs> Shlomo Jr. I knew your father, or I heard rumors of your father. I, I bet you cannot guess his name. Was it Shlomo? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm Agent 26. I'm here for the job. Vanessa? I come from around the corner as I've been watching all of you and say, Hi, I'm Vera. <laughs> Hi, Vera. An elf stands, steps out, and says hello. Try to hide into the shadow again. All right. I see you too like hiding. <laughs> yes. So, as you stand there, light r rain begins to patter on the cobblestones as the sun sets behind the spower, uh, spires and towers of the city. You see a male Vidalkin in well-tailored clothes approach your group from around the side of the prison. His deep blue face bears a gentle but concerned expression. He raises his hand to hail you and speaks in a low tone as he eyes... His, his eyes take in your group and the nearby environs. Are you here to help us find something? Are you here to help me find something? No, that was not the point of the contact. You're helping me find something. All right, you win this time. All right. I'm good at tracking. Well, that's what I need. Then I can help you. I'm good at Maybe. hiding. I'm good at hiding. You're good at hiding? Okay. <laughs> uh, so this person introduces themselves as Nasius Ven and says that they are a Vidalcan noble and protector from the office of the Guild Pact. All of you know the office of the Guild Pact is currently the adjudicating force for the Guild Pact itself, while the living Guild Pact is off doing whatever it is he does in his own time. So, Nasia says that uh, he's here to hire you for a job. All right, Nasius. Yes. What are we here for? My gills flex. We have need for your particular skills to assist in the retrieval of a convict who got loose just before sunrise this morning. He escaped during his transfer to Uzdek, Uzdek, a maximum security prison where he would have spent the rest of his days. His name is Krenko. He's the boss of a large gang of goblins that operates around Foundry Street. He was apprehended to answer for a long list of crimes, including murder. He allegedly incited a riot that led to the deaths of a guard and two inmates at the prison just a week ago. The warden decided enough was enough and to put through the transfer. Krinko's made a lot of enemies, but the Shatter Gang brothers are probably his biggest threat. They're a rival goblin gang specializing in illicit weapons, and they want Krinko dead in reprisal for the murder of one of their lieutenants. The dead lieutenant also happens to be the youngest of the three siblings that run the gang. They'll tele tear apart the neighborhood to find him once they know he has escaped. Normally, we'd let the Azurias deal with this situation, but we suspect that Kranko might have had help from one of the other guilds when he escaped. We're enlisting others to investigate that connection, as it could point to a bigger problem. We need you to track down Kranko and bring him back alive. Then we can interrogate him to keep him off the streets for good. And what is our reward? Uh, well, I'm prepared to give you ten Xenos right now to cover any expenses you might have, Incur to, you might incur during the investigation. Uh, upon delivering the cl criminal, you'll receive 100 Xenos and my gratitude, which I will convey to your guild leaders. A piece? Total. Total? Mm. What if we bring him back dead? 
Ah, uh, you will receive no reward. So he has to be alive. He would have to be alive, yes. What about the reward of the joy of killing him? Uh, I will leave that to you, but your guild leaders may have a differing opinion on how that might go down. I heard Aurelia was mean. Maybe a Sajik. Both mean. A life matters. I accept your terms. Okay. Nasius gives you some information uh, about the escape itself and where he believes that Cranko might actually be headed to. There are two different areas. The first is Tin Street. I hear there's a lot of hooligans there. There are a lot of hooligans there, yes. Not uh, many artifacts, though. <laughs> <laughs> Only during Rock Shop, the holiday. <laughs> We believe that Krenko has a contact on Tain Street who is an is it weapon maker. Uh, Would you say it's a token contact? Mm. <laughs> and uh, they might know where Krenko has been hiding, or at least where you might be able to find someone to lead you to the hideout. Uh, that is pretty much the only, in the only lead we have at the moment. I feel like we should go to Tin Street. <laughs> For once, I agree with the Boros guy. We begin walking or to Tin Street. There's no subway, right? We just got, we just got to walk. Do, like, uh, yeah, you have to walk. There's, there's no subway. This is not Kaladesh. It's not is, that fancy. Is my trusty steed nearby, Horse of Shlomo? You, your, your trusty steed, the Horse of Shlomo? Yes. Yes. No. He's not? He's, not at all. He's on vacation? He's, yes, he is on vacation in, uh, in the... He's, he's living it up in the Orzov district. I feel like we should walk. Uh, so, Nasius actually provides you a dossier of information. Uh, you know that Krenko has been a mob boss for several years. His turf was around Foundry Street, and he's been a person of interest in numerous crimes befitting a mobster, but has managed to evade the law until recently. Uh, he was brought into custody by Gideon Jura, a freelancer working with the Boros Legion at the time. Krenko was found guilty of murdering Dargig, one of the Shattergang brothers, and an assault with a deadly weapon against Gideon. The weapon on his person at the time of the arrest was a uh, magical shiv. Reportedly, it could punch through force barriers. It, was, it isn't known how he received that, but it may be assumed that he has it. Uh, and his known associates include a mysterious person known as Mr. Taz and the Is It Weapons Maker, uh, who is named Falish. And both of them are persons of interest to the Azorius. So all of this is on, on a sheet of paper that he, he gives you. Do we, re do we uh, read it as we're walking to Tin Street? Yes. Great. So you head to Tin Street? Tin Street away. All right. All right. As you enter Tin Street, the street leads to the market on Tin Street, one of the largest in the district. Surely there will be those that would know where to find a rogue weapons dealer or two. As you start to approach the actual Tin Street, there is a very large crowd blocking the road. Ahead, there's a press of people of all different races. They're all facing away from you towards something of interest ahead of you. Suddenly you see a large gout of fire shoot upwards into the sky and you hear cheers of excitement from the crowd. When you press forward to see what's of interest and spot your way through the throng, you see a half dozen Rakdos bards performing an impromptu exhibition. And since they always provide a bit of entertainment, the shoppers in the market are very eager for this diversion. What do you do? I'm taken back by the Rakdos bards. I'm in awe. You're in awe by them? Yes. Okay, as you're watching them, you see there are about six total uh, bards that are tumbling around. Two of them are flame blade jugglers, and they seem to be throwing these very, very sharp swords into the air, but the hilts of the swords are on fire, so they keep catching them by the blade over and over again. Uh, two of them are pain acrobats, and you can see them hanging by hooks. And then the other two are spitting out gouts of flame just above the heads of the crowd. 
Can I make a perception check to see if I notice anything that might be related to the dossier nearby? Sure. Cranko yeah, or ahead. otherwise? Uh, <laughs> critical failure. <laughs> I, I perceive uh, nothing. You perceptive. see six Rakdos revelers <laughs> performing, and you are in awe. I'm, I'm surprised he even sees that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are there any other goblins in the crowd? Uh, yeah, there's a mix of other goblins and, and humans and Vidalkin. Can I attempt to ask them if they know where Krinko is? Sure. As a goblin. Yeah, you, you, would you like to approach the goblin? I would like to approach the goblin. How are you getting to the goblin? I'm just going to... I'm just going to saunter up to him. You're going to yeah. slide your way through the crowd? All right. Yeah. So you kind of saunter your way up to the, the goblin, and he looks over at you. What do you want? I was wondering if uh, you know uh, Krinko, the mob boss. It looks around. The goblin. Yeah. Are you seriously asking me that here? Yeah, I am. Of course I don't know Krinko, and if I did know where he was, I wouldn't tell you. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, I'm out of options uh, he, he starts to scatter away from you and with a look of disgust on his face. Uh, can I attempt to follow? Uh, yeah, if you'd like to. Make a stealth check to follow? Sure, make a stealth it's, check. My checks are going great Yes, so, far, so, this, should, so... Should, this should work out really well for you. Oh, hey. Uh, 19. Okay, suddenly the, uh, the Demir Simic hybrid agent disappears from your field of view. He kind of disappears into the crowd. Uh, and he starts following the the goblin a bit. Uh, the goblin starts to get to the edge of the crowd and then just kind of, like, wanders away. He wanders into another well-lit part of the street, and he does not seem to be uh, going anywhere in particular. He doesn't seem to be, like, nervous or anything about it. So uh, he starts f- walking down the street. You're able to follow him for about a block or so. What do you all do since this guy just kind of disappeared? I'm watching the jugglers. Okay. I'm trying to get through the crowd to have a, a front front seat for the show. Okay, so you are how are you getting through the crowd? Stealthily. Stealthily. <laughs> Can you just uh uh <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, go go ahead and uh uh roll me a persuasion check. Persuasion. Ten. Okay, you're you're able to get like pretty far up in the crowd without too much difficulty, just by kind of politely moving and excuse me, excuse me, you know, here and there, uh, you know, just trying to keep out of people's ways and not be noticed. So you're able to get up like pretty close, and then you're entertained by these Rakdos jugglers. Can Are I? There... Oh. Is there anything suspicious about their performance? Make a perception check. Roll d20. Okay. All checks are d20. Ten? Uh, no, nothing seems out of the ordinary from these. These, these just seem like regular, the, the, as regular as Rakdos can be. Are there any uh, buildings in the market that with a balcony or something where I could get a higher view? Uh, yes, there are definitely several buildings, but most of them seem to be either shops or like homes, personal dwellings. After about two blocks, the goblin actually moves into a an alleyway. I keep following him. All right. So the goblin just goes into an alleyway, goes up to a door, and knocks, and the door opens for him. And uh, the from what you can see from the inside, it looks like it's just a simple pub. Um, does it look like it's a goblin pub or yeah. like a human pub? All right. I know a goblin. <laughs> Me, I I, <clears throat> I go back to the group, let them know what I saw, and then try and rec- and and then when I get back there, I'm like, what's your what's your character's name? Estric. Estric. E- we have a use for the noble goblin persuasion here. Follow me to Gabo Bar, and we can see what we can do. I definitely follow him to the bar. All right. So I will, do you? I will follow as well. Me too. All right. So the rest of you follow uh, follow Agent Twenty Six. Twenty Six. Agent Twenty Six. 20, Agent Twenty Six. Master of Murder. <laughs> Down uh, just a few blocks. Go into an alleyway, and you see the door that he points out, and you can tell right away that this is probably just a typical Goblin bar. I, I still want to go in. Okay. So uh, what do you do? You just approach the door. 
I knock on the door. Okay. The the door opens up, and you see another goblin standing there. Yeah? I heard this is where you get the beer at. The ale? What's with your uh, friends there? Uh, we were all adopted. These are my brothers and sisters. As he's talking, I'm going to try to sneak through without anyone seeing me to get into the bar. That's, that's, uh, you're going to have to roll me a stealth check. Eight. So the goblin just sees you coming right up and goes, excuse me? Hey, can I come in? <laughs> no. Uh, I'm, I'm going to cast Mage Hands. Okay. Um, I'm going to use this to cause a, to knock something behind the goblin, causing a distraction, hoping that some of us can sneak through. Okay. Uh, go ahead and, uh, just, you don't have to roll for Mage nope. Hand, right? Yep. So, uh, a couple of tankards fall to the floor behind the goblin, and he, uh, turns around and looks to see what, what the commotion is. And anybody who wants to try and sneak in can, can roll a stealth. Sneak it in. Yep. 17. All right. 10. All right. 16. 10. All right. So uh, somehow the Boros in chain That's plates, right. yeah, <laughs> chain mail, and, uh, and the, the I, Demir I have, are I able to kind of feet. sneak in a little bit. And uh, as, as um, Estrid, what was it, Estrix? Estrix. Estrix. Yeah. Uh, wanders in and the the goblin doorkeep kind of looks over and then sees uh Val Vera, Vera. Varen, uh as as you come in it hey what do you do i just told you not to come in here and then come, turns around and sees the other <sighs> whatever <laughs> i'm not paid enough for this and closes the door behind you so, so, so you're, so you're in the bar inside? you're in the bar all of us are inside all of you are inside yes great um <clears throat> I go hide in a corner. You can see that uh, in the bar, there are definitely mostly goblins, but there are a couple of other other people in the... There's a couple of humans, uh, a Vidalcan, you know, kind of hanging out. So there's uh, a couple of goblins, huh? Uh, are there any... Is it goblins? Oh, you definitely can see another is it goblin. I can? Yeah. I think I should talk to him. Okay. So you approach the is it goblin? Yeah. Uh, ask him where I can find some cool weapons. Uh, what do you mean by that? There are definitely plenty of weapons dealers around. Yeah, but I need cool ones. Uh, roll a... <laughs> roll a persuasion check. Actually, no, just roll a charisma check. Just a second. Let me just the, the, on the left-hand side. Minus one. All Minus right. one. All right, let's see how this goes. Two. So it's one. You got the, okay, so it's a one. Yep. <laughs> just... <laughs> The is it goblin that you're talking to? Are you dense or? Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, well, I'm adopted and dense. Don't pick adopted on me. and <laughs> dense. All right. Well, I, wait. I thought uh, we were the adopted. You adopted. might want to talk to Fallish. She's a female. She is a couple blocks down west. You can find her place if you're looking for anything a little more exotic. I thank the goblin and offer to buy him a drink. Okay. Uh, that is, yeah. You're able to buy them a drink. You spend one copper piece. Wow, that's a good value. Yeah. This it's a, a goblin bar. The, coming back here later. It's not a, very big, not a very big glass. So I guess we huddle up now since we know yeah. where Falish is. All right. Let's go see what the, is up with Falish. I agree. We should go. All right. All right, so, so we, we waltz down the street, <laughs> literally and figuratively. Literally and figuratively. And right. uh, attempt to find, hopefully we're given some descriptors of what, what the house looks like. All and right. we're not just knocking on every house. No, you, you have a rough idea based on the location that the goblin gave you. Um, let's see here. Following the directions to Fallish's shop, you find yourself in an alley behind a restaurant. Near the back door to the establishment is a smaller, padlocked iron door that looks as if it came from a vault. 
What would you like to do? So it's a it's a restaurant. Yes, there's you you find yourself in the alley behind the restaurant based on the instructions that the the goblin gave the the vault. slightly more detailed instructions. Yeah. Can I try and pick the lock? You are more than welcome to try and pick the lock. You can roll me a dexterity check. Sixteen. All right, you're able to after a short amount of time. Uh, you're able to just you hear the. The, the lock click just slightly and you're able to get that open. Um, I look beyond at the it. door, uh, I'm sorry, beyond the door you see a narrow staircase that leads 20 feet down to, f to a green-tinged copper door with a closed sliding peephole in its center. Wait, so that, that's just further down the alley? It it's down? actually downstairs. Yeah. Oh. Downstairs past the door? Past the door that you just opened. Oh, I see. Alright, everyone. Stealth up and follow me. Uh, right. I, I attempt to stealthily climb down the stairs. All right, so uh, this is another door, and it looks, it, as I said, it's it's green tinged. It's very copper. It looks a little bit more ornate, and um, it is also locked. I attempt to pick the lock. Go ahead and roll me a dexterity check. Ooh. Eighteen. All right. Everyone, please roll me a dexterity save. 20. Ooh. 14. The chainmail rattles with a three. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a 12. All right. So as you attempt to, uh, as you attempt to pick this lock, suddenly the door glows slightly, and then, uh, <laughs> you see uh, Shlomo but from uh, so you're in front you're next you're next you're in the end I was in the back you were in the back that's what I thought yes. uh, suddenly you hear the commotion uh, from behind you as uh, of, of chain mail hitting the ground and as you turn around Shlomo is fast asleep I'm dreaming about my horse. Does the door open? The door does open. Well, you know, you made something <laughs> lose something. <laughs> so you don't want to kick this guy to try and wake him up? Me. I kick him. All right. Um, I feel another shock. Yeah. You, you, you feel a slight slight shock. Uh, this seems like you, you can tell. You, the wizard, can tell that this was definitely a... a glyph of some sort. It was a spell that put them to sleep. Mm. I am a wizard. So, it's probably going to take a little bit more than that to actually wake them up. You so, know what? With a flourish oh. of my hand, I cast Shocking Grasp. And I put my <laughs> hand on his shoulder. <laughs> Alright. How much does that do? How much, how much? I have to look in the book. Sorry. Nothing like an adopted brother to, <laughs> yeah, to just... help me out. That's so good. Okay. Says, I only have 11 hit points. On hit, the target takes 1d8 lightning damage. So roll Thank a you. d8. D8. This could kill me right here. Can we get advantage on that or something? Because, <laughs> because he's unconscious? Because he's unconscious? Yeah. A three. Okay. All right. So you take three points of damage, and you are shocked awake. Ow. You are on the ground, and you don't know what's happening. Hooray. <laughs> but the door does open. I walk in, and you in, inside you hear a bit of wait, rustling. Wait, wait. In my disoriented state, I, I wake up and swing my sword. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Can you roll me... Uh, just roll me a, an attack roll with your sword. Uh, well, before modifiers, it's a six. So. It's a six? Okay. So you are... You, you wildly swing your sword in this narrow hallway, and it gets stuck into the wall next to you a bit. You could probably wiggle it free pretty easily. I will. Yeah, no. I will attempt right. to pull the sword from the stone. <laughs> All right. Are you? You're are able you to get now? that loose there. I, I, yeah, I, I feel. I feel better. I feel I, I, better. I, I gotta say, Mike, is it? Uh, is it slow mo or slow mo? <laughs> this rate. Am I right, everyone at home? Uh, Am I right? <laughs> All right. So, as you open the door, the flickering glow of lanterns reveals a haphazard room that is about 30 feet long and 20 feet wide. It is packed with equipment, tools, and materials. Hanging from the walls are 
all manner of weapons. Boxes and small crates are stuffed under tables uh, that overflow with flask. A workbench is piled high with tools. There's a small living area with a bed and a large iron stove in the back of the room. As you come in, uh, you see a woman that is a human woman uh, who clearly has the clothing of an is it uh, who is very startled to see that you're in her room. Uh, so what do you do? Do you have any skull clamps? <laughs> what? Oh, never mind. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I inquire about Krenko. Just straight up. Just straight just up. Going for it. Up. Worst the mirror agent no, ever. What are you talking about? Krenko? Yes. What, what, what do you mean? I don't know who you're talking about. We have it on good authority that you sold Krenko some enchanted weapons. Now, we could take you out for it, or we could just learn where to go next. Your uh, choice. Let's, let's, let's work something out here. Should I make a perception? Or a, a yeah, persuasion. Persuasion check? Yeah. Yep. Maybe we'll work something out. I don't know. 19. Hey, that's way better. All right, so you're able to convince her that maybe going against you is not the best thing to do. So she, uh, she, she says, uh, yeah, I sold some weapons to, to Krenko's gang a little while ago. I can tell you where the drop point is, but I don't know where he's hiding. Do I think she's telling the truth? Uh, can you make a perception check? Uh, one. Yeah, she definitely is. <laughs> 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 um, all right, where's the drop point? So she kind of gives you an area on Foundry Street. It's uh, it's it's outside the Smokehouse Inn. It's I'm supposed to make the drop at sunset, or uh, the yeah, I, I made the drop yesterday. Uh, no, I'm supposed to make the drop tomorrow. I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong date. Tomorrow? What time tomorrow? Sunset. We'll make the drop for you. Okay. I'm pretty sure that that uh, he's going to use them to attack the, the Shatter Gang brothers. That's what I heard. So just be aware that, they're, that he's going all out against them. Excellent. All right. So, so I, I, turn back to the I turn back to the group now. Yep. I propose we make the drop tomorrow, and then we meet with Krenko. I think you guys should hide, and I'm the one who makes the drop. Yeah, yeah, Some that sounds lowly great. goblin out there. Yeah. Well, at least two out of the three of us are good at hiding, so. I'll be hiding. So, sounds like a plan. <laughs> All right, so we, um, we'll take your, take the drop. We'll make it easy for you, easy whoa, whoa, for whoa. us. Whoa, whoa, Take the drop? Oh, take the drop to Krenko. Yeah, you're, you're not going to just take my weapons. How is these are, these are my goods. This is how I make my living. What if, what if we leave a small deposit? To if there were some small donation made, maybe. How small are we talking? <laughs> uh, let's say ten Zenos. <laughs> I'm going to die soon. I don't want to be used for money anyway. <laughs> money has no meaning to me. I, uh, I pull out ten crumpled Zenos, if Zenos can crumple. And yes, these them. gold pieces definitely crumple. And leave them. They're crumpled anyway, underneath my gills. Why are these wet? You do or don't want to know, depending. <laughs> no, no, I don't. I don't. No. She, uh, uh, she's like holding the gold coins. These just look loose, wet gold coins. It's the box there. Uh, oh, sorry. That, that, that's a scale. Let me oh, take that back. Ah. All right. All right. So she points you to a box that's that's got a couple of things in it. Uh, vial of acid, alchemist supplies. Um, couple of other things and she does say uh, <laughs> yeah so <laughs> they, uh, they they did ask for a couple of uh, bombs that I may have delivered them to already just so you know uh, but they should be uh, quite deadly while we're here anything for our Boros friend any great weapons you can hook uh, Shlomo up with perhaps a new long sword do you have a long sword? I do. Okay. Well, she also has a long sword that looks very similar to the one you have. I offer to trade on my way to a Black Lotus. Okay. Sure. Oh, trade you. plus two gold. 
I get two gold also? No, 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 no. I get two gold. Is You're giving me a long used sword long sword. Is this long sword special in any way? Not at all. I accept. All right. So she takes two of your gold and your slightly better gold, long sword and gives you a slightly worse long sword. It is the exact same stats wise. I just want you to know that you got got. Shlomo, you should name the sword. You should. It is Sword of Shlomo. Sword of Shlomo 2. Yes. Electric Boogaloo. So, so the drop is sunset the next day? The sunset the next and day what time is it right now? on Foundry Street. It's already night. Okay. So you really only have to go through the one day. I, I rest. Just, just inside, just inside this place. Yeah. She's like, "What are you here for?" <laughs> like, yeah, I just take a nap too. Yeah, we're just here tonight. Eh, you know, we we don't have any else place else to go. So, just surrounded by deadly weapons, <laughs> no better place to take a sleep. None of no no problems here at all. Uh, is she okay with us? No, she has to get out of her house. Hmm. Perhaps an inn would be a good <laughs> yeah, idea. Yeah, probably It'd be all right. So you go find an inn. Uh, they charge you. One gold for two rooms that you can split between the two, the four of you. Uh, all right, I'm bunking with another hider. Mm. Hiders don't snore. I spent all my money on my sweet new sword. I don't need sleep. Can I just wander the halls? Sure. That is a thing that this elf does, just wanders the halls while every. It's like a cat's, you know, when they get hungry at 3 a.m. and they just start scratching on your door. I was thinking more like Lady Macbeth, just like <laughs> in, in a trance, scrubbing at her hand. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, somewhere between the two, Cat and Lady Macbeth, it's one of those. Just somewhere between those two, yes. Lady Catback or something. Uh, anyway. You're able to get a good night's sleep. The rest of the next day passes pretty uneventfully, and you're able to get to the drop point and deliver the weapons during the day without any sort of uh, any sort of like confrontation or nobody seems to really care what you're doing. You just have these, uh, these, um, this box that clearly is overflowing with weapons. So now it's drop point time. Yes. All right. So we're gonna set up uh, Elric here with the weapons, and then we're all gonna hide, or at least two of us are gonna hide. I will also attempt to hide. <laughs> I think you're gonna have to roll. Yeah, we'll all right. Maybe Hold on, just one on. second. You All right, you're able to hide, and uh, pretty easily, because the, the drop point is uh, kind of obvious. So the, the, there's a group of about three goblins that come up, approach it, grab the box, and start wandering over to uh, Foundry Street. Wait, we don't meet with them or anything? They just grab the weapons and go? Yeah, they just grab the weapons and go. So they don't pay us? No, they just start walking. So would he follow? If you would like to follow. I yell out, halt! From the shadows. <laughs> they, they, all three just suddenly stop and stare around, and then the one with the box and another one just start running, and the third one runs in a different direction. I charge after them. <laughs> uh, I, I pursue a different one than whoever Shlomo is pursuing. <laughs> okay. I pursue uh, the slow one. All right. You're able to chase down the third goblin into an alleyway while... Uh, while Gavin, you, you are starting to follow the two. One that is kind of encumbered because it has the, the, weapons, uh, the weapons crate. So I look around. I don't see anybody. <laughs> they all disappeared they real all quick. They all disappeared real quick. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, Shlomo, when you corner the, the goblin, it just starts kind of freaking out. And, ah, what, are you, what are you doing? What? You owe us money. What are you talking about? For the weapons. We, we, already, pay, we pay good money we for already, these weapons. We already paid Falish. They were at where we were supposed to pick them up. What are you talking about? She said you didn't pay her. What? We paid for them already. Do you have a receipt? <laughs> where are you? So much. <laughs> Do you have a receipt? <laughs> what is a receipt? I have no idea. <laughs> Uh, so you're interrogating this. Uh, the, the, make an intimidation check. Excellent. Never, uh, seven. <laughs> All right. So it's not super scared of you. It's really just wondering why you were chasing it and thought maybe you were trying to steal the, the weapons away. Give me those weapons. I don't have them. 
Where, where's your friend? I don't know. We split up. Smash cut to. <laughs> Smash cut to the other two goblins running away, one with a box of weapons. What's up? The Shadow King brothers killed my mother. Shatter gang. Shatter, Shatter gang. Shatter gang. Yeah, Shatter gang. Ah, those the siege jerks. Ga- the siege gang. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, smash cut to the other goblin who is running away. Uh, the one with the box starts to trail behind. The one that does not have the box is very clearly running towards a uh, like a charred building or a large soot-stained wooden building. You can see that the one with the box is also kind of following that one. Uh, they're, they're probably going to the same place. Um, I, I keep trailing them and let them go. If they go, if they decide to go inside the building, I let them both enter uh, and see if anything happens. If there's any kind of lock or anything, I should be aware of. Okay, and um, that's what I'm you do. I'm also following, but in the shadows opposite. The can you can you roll a stealth check as well? Eighteen. All right, so both of you are are following pretty easily, and these goblins kind of start to slow down, not thinking they're being followed anymore. Um, so you approach a large soot-stained wooden building, and on the side there's a faded symbol of the Boros Legion. It sits, the, the building sits on the edge of a canal, uh, and the, the timbers of the building look very cracked and singed. There's a closed bay door that faces north towards the water that you can kind of see, and there's a, a wooden track, as if it, it's something to put, push a cart on, that's going from the building all the way to the edge of the pier. Uh, there's a smaller, uh, similar bay door uh, mm-hmm. on the other side towards the, the place that you're facing. Um, and then you can see on uh, the, the west side that there's a double door. So like you're just kind of approaching from that side. You can tell through the windows that there's obviously a bay door on the the pier side. There's the bay doors on your side. And then there's just small do- double doors on your side. And the, the two goblins run in through the double doors and close them behind themselves. Does it look, look like they locked them or anything like that? No, they just ran in and obviously just like closed. It, it doesn't look like it's probably that locked anymore, you know? It's the, the whole building looks like it was with, in a fire at some point. Do, it, do I recognize it being part of the Boros? You're terrorizing a goblin in an alleyway somewhere. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm not. Oh, good, good, good. I, I, I go back, report on what I saw, and then try and lead everyone there. All right, so you go back and you see uh, Shlomo cornering a very terrified goblin. Um, is this guy bothering you? Mm-hmm. Yes! Are you with him? No, absolutely not. Never. <laughs> and um, and I try and be intimidating to Mike uh, to uh, Shlomo, hoping he'll get the idea. Shlomo, roll a perception check. Five. He doesn't get it. <laughs> uh, goblin, uh, you you I'll t- I'll t- deal with this guy. Go on. I, I let the goblin go and. <laughs> All right. So the goblin runs away and start, and takes off uh, around the corner of the alley in the same direction as the building that you were just at. Hopefully we're friends now. That might be useful later. <laughs> is there right. any identifying marks on him so I can know which goblin it is? <laughs> Not at all. Don't forget me. I'm still like waiting at the drop zone. I guess all disappeared. Yeah, everybody use, else disappeared. I use Mage Hand to paint a uh, bunch of dirt on his back so I can tell which goblin it is later. <laughs> all right, so, so as the goblin's goblin. running away, suddenly a streak of dirt yeah. comes up on his back. He doesn't back. know it, but I do. Yeah. Great. I, I tell them what I saw. All right. Do you go back to the drop point and go get your goblin friend? Mm, I say we carry on without him. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I'll, I'll just be here. <laughs> Let me know when I, you need me. I remind them the goblin exists. <laughs> All right, so you go back and get... Uh, oh. Estric. Estric, <laughs> yes. Uh, you go back and get Estric and relay the information. All right, so you know that there is a an old warehouse that looks to be pretty burnt up uh, that is on the edge of the pier that the two goblins went into. What do you do? Hey, now, now you're there. Uh, oh, we headed, we headed back. We're back at the... What was that? Did we head back, or are we still at the drop point? Sorry, I you're that. still like near the drop point at the moment. So you're you're like Let, let's head back. You're like seven or eight blocks away from where the the warehouse was. Yeah. You want to head back to the warehouse? Yeah, back to the warehouse. I, I should we all start stealthing in through the front. 
Nothing oh, says man. stealth like the front. I say we kick the door in. Is there a side This door? seems like a debate as old as time. The rogue wants to sneak in. The Boros Paladin wants to kick in the door. Can we split the party, Jeremy? Uh, sure. Because you said there are three entrances, right? There are at least three that you can see. All right. I want to go with slow-mo. Yes. <laughs> not not slow-mo. Slow-mo. Two people. Slow-mo. All right. Two people kick in the front door. You, y'all, the... Because um, Ravnica, the Demir say y'all. Um, y'all <laughs> can, can go uh, kick in the front door, cause a nice distraction. Uh, Vera and I will sneak in through the right door. Sounds like a plan. You're going to sneak in through the giant bay door? What, what, what's the other option? The other option was the small double door. Is it the goblin? Small double door it is. All right. You guys want to kick in the bay door? Well, first, do I recognize the, uh, the area when I uh, back? You, you recognize it as a place where it used to... Um, you, you know from reports that this building probably held uh, equipment finished from a nearby forge and that it burned down some time ago and that uh, the, the Boros felt like it was too much to actually try and like fix it back up. So they just left it abandoned. I kick in the front door. The front door, the giant bay door? I, I attempt to. Okay. Right. And VR and I are going around the sides. And you're going around the sides. All right. Ready? Woo. Stealthy I five. Uh, let's see. So I have to do two things here. All right. Um, Congratulations, everyone. We split the party in a campaign. We're all at the same table at a convention, and this will be a DM's nightmare. Yep. So we are doing everything as planned, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure of it. Uh, Shlomo, you can attempt to uh, kick in the door. Roll me an attack roll with whatever you're... If you're going to kick it, you just roll me an unarmed attack roll. If you're going to try and bust it down with a sword or something, just roll me an attack with a sword. Uh, five. All right. Uh, you flail wildly. Roll me a little bit of damage here. Oh, sorry. Oh, he, he wasn't I, I, I was rolling damage. That was your, just your damage. Good. I, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Uh, so, um, you start to splinter a hole into the bay doors, and uh, it, it seems like if you'd make it another couple of good shots at it, you'll probably open up a hole big enough for you to get through. Um, maybe just like one more, you'll be able to get the, the goblin will be able to get through. I swing again. All right, roll me some more damage. Uh, I think it's not, let's put, uh, five. All right, so uh, yeah, a hole opens up that's probably big enough for the goblin to get through, but up to you whether or not you want to keep a attacking the door. I'll, I'll swing one more time. All right, go ahead. Two more damage. All right, so you're pretty sure that you could fit through this door now if you tried. Now, uh, Agent 26... You wanted to go to the side door. Yeah, when you head there, there are a set of double doors that uh, that seem like they're just unlocked. I open them. Okay. When you open up the doors, uh, there's a room that's about 20 feet square and it has a, like a lower ceiling. It's only about 10 foot high. Uh, it appears to be an office and makeshift living quarters. There's a table in the center of the room, ringed by six chairs. Under it's an iron box, and there's a cot in there as well. Uh, there's a large window on the wall to the east, just across from you, that offers a view of the warehouse beyond. Is that the warehouse that, is that, the warehouse that these guys are breaking into Yes, right now? the warehouse that they're breaking into. So you're just kind of in an office itself. I'm going to go up to the window and stare and see if I can see anything all right when when you look um when you look through the window you see a couple of goblins scattering into different piles of uh boxes and such that are just kind of charred and everywhere uh and you start to hear a very loud noise coming from the front bay doors that you feel like maybe is the reason why these goblins are all scattering how far of a drop is it uh, there's no drop here. You're actually on the on the floor, on the ground floor. Oh, so we can see in the warehouse. You can see into the warehouse. When you look into the warehouse, it's much larger. There's actually um, there's actually like 60 foot high ceilings 
and you can see the rails going through the whole building from the bay doors that they're starting to kick in all the way to the pier. And you can see kind of above you that there's a catwalk. Um, and inside the warehouse, uh, the light is actually like really dim. And you can see that the whole thing has been charred by fire. Um, the catwalk walk above has stairs that lead up to it near the centered of the eastern wall, which is across from where you're at. And that there's just dozens of large boxes and crates scattered around the, the warehouse. Um, and on the rails, you can see right in the center, there's a giant wooden wheeled cart. And over it is a 10 foot high soot stained like iron statue. It kind of looks humanoid uh, and it has like claw like appendages at the end, ends of its arms. And in the place where you would expect a head is uh, a seat with a bunch of levers around it. Mm. Are we inside yet? Uh, after a couple more hits, you're able to open up a, a hole big enough for you guys to come through. And as, as you come through, you two see them as the light bursts through the door there. Uh, so wave. you come in, and <laughs> as you come in, uh, the giant mechanical suit starts to move a little bit. How, how far away is this suit? The suit from you is roughly 50, uh, 40 feet. Okay. So, so I can see in the dark. Do I see? Anything? Yeah, you have dark vision. You can see uh, up to 60 feet. Yes. Mm -hmm. As as you walked in, you saw a goblin get into like the little little pod area and start to move some levers and it starts moving around. Oh lord. Everybody roll me initiative. Woo! Is that the big 20? Yeah. Yeah, big yeah D20 plus your initiative modifier. 13. 13. 16. I have two 13s. Yes. And then, uh, Steven, you had a 16? Shlomo had a 16. I, I had a 16. Yeah, Shlomo, Shlomo. Jr. <laughs> Shlomo is my father's name. Yeah, Shlomo is my father, please. 16. This happens a lot. Uh, it's very easy to be confused. We look a lot alike. And Excellent. Nothing like a big mechanical goblin to ruin your day. <laughs> All right. So, um, we. Well, I just want Gavin to look at this die right here. That's a, a Dungeons and Dragons symbol, that Jeremy. Is, what that, does that mean? That, that is a 20. Wow. Somebody rolled a 20. That means we get to give away a copy of the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica. Woo! Did you select one? All right, let's see if this person is still here. Uh, five, eight, four, nine, seven, five. Oh, Kenji, you, you didn't have one. <laughs> All right, see another one. Ken Kenji won. No, I saw it. Uh, five, eight, four, nine, seven, zero. Yes. Yay! Yay! Congrats. You too can come join us on Krenko's Way. But, <laughs> although now you will know how the story ends. All right. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Okay, sounds like it's time for some battles. Might be some time time for some battles. I have to find Cranko in my pile of nonsense here. That also means they're going first, right? They rolled the twenty for. Oh yeah, they're definitely going first here. It's gonna so, be fine, everybody. Don't worry yeah. about it. We got four people versus a robot. It's fine. You'll it's be fine. It, it'll be fine. It's whatever. All right, here's Cranko. Find the, the. How many uh, giant goblin robots have you guys fought in your time? One steam flogger boss. Three. There aren't many in the forest. <laughs> ha! There it is. All right, sweet. Uh, yeah, this thing's gonna be hard. All right. As long as as long as he doesn't untap over and over again, we'll be okay. Uh, All right, who has higher dexterity, Steven or Vanessa? Uh, What's your... I have 14. I have 16. 16. 16. All right, so Vanessa gets to go first. They're out of the two of you. Um, no, it's it, just out of the two of you. So, 
As you bust in the door, you notice that the levers start moving and uh, the giant rig just starts to move towards you. Uh, and it, it gets about halfway to you and then it becomes Shlomo's turn. What do you, what would you like to do? I dash towards the giant robot and, oh. and attempt to grapple it. You attempt to grapple it. Okay. All right. Uh, can you make me a, an unarmed attack roll, I believe, or is it a strength, a post strength check? I can't remember grappling. Uh, I know I have grapple. Okay. That's what I know. Just, I, I'm, I'm happy to add your roll roll. Doesn't really matter. Uh, it's a five. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. So, uh, <laughs> Steven, you see Shlomo Jr. run into the building, sword-wielded, and runs up straight to this giant piece of equipment and attempts to just grab it. Uh, you said what? ram it or grab it? Grab oh, it. Grab it. <laughs> grab it. Okay. Yes. Uh, 195 is grapple. I'm going to uh, guess the grapple is not successful. It is. Oh, yeah, it's not successful. It is a strength athletics check. Yeah, so, so five was right. This thing's strength. What was your roll? Five. five. That does not. Yeah, you were unable to grapple it. So as you run up, you attempt to grab this, uh, this machine, and you very. Very much can't like you. You're you're pretty close, honestly. Oh wow! You were you were able to like grab a hold of it a little bit, but it's kind of slick with oil still, so you kind of slip your hand slips right out of it. Um, so after that happens, uh, uh, can't Estric? Estric. You're you see Shlomo run into the building and try and grab grab this thing. Uh, what do you do? I feel like I want to cast fireball, but you said it was oil on it. I don't. It may be a little bit of oil on it, you know. That that's, that's perfect. That's perfect? That's I cast perfect. Fireball. You cast Fireball. All right. <laughs> so it's a D10. It's or, what? Or one D10. Uh, I believe you have to roll an attack on a Fireball, but let me so double check. I hope everything blows up. I really hope so. That'd be great. I'm sure there's nothing explosive in this room of weapons either. No. Nope. With all the bombs they purchase. It's going to be great. We have to All get right. too many buildings anyway. So fireball, actual just fire. Firebolt. 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 Good. Firebolt. firebolt. I was gonna say that. that's way too high a level for you. Yeah. Uh, firebolt. So one action. Then you can flash it back. All right. right? It's a, just a cantrip. All right. Uh, yeah. You go ahead and make a ranged spell attack. So you roll uh, that plus. It should. Is it on your sheet there? It just says one d10 fire. Okay. So just roll an attack roll. And then add what it says there. Like it, give, it should give you like a plus something. Plus four. Okay, so yeah, roll it and add a pl plus roll four. Roll a d20. Okay. Roll a d20. Yeah. Eleven. Eleven total. Yeah. All right. All right. Your your firebolt heads towards it and then uh, kind of fizzles out like halfway halfway there. Thank thank Boo. goodness. Boo. Or, or, I hang my head in shame. Uh, so from from the uh, office space to the side, uh, you two see these these two charging through the front door. The machine come to life and start to head towards them, and them try to take it head on by themselves. Uh, Vanessa, what do you do? Uh. Is there a door that leads into the warehouse? Yeah, there's just a regular are? door here. Uh, how how close am I to the? the you're you're thing? about ha you're like halfway through the room, so you're at like uh, you're you're about fifteen feet from the door. How about from the uh, the the dude? How far from what? I, how far am I from the the mechanical? Oh, guy? if you were to go through the door, you would be about fifty feet behind it. Okay, can I open the door? and try to shoot him with an arrow. Not him, because we don't want to kill him. There's a you goblin attack in the, the suit, right? Yeah, there's a goblin in the suit. But you want to just attack the suit? Mm. I want to hit his arm. 
Okay. Uh, if you're making a called shot to try and avoid hitting like the central space with the goblin in it, uh, roll me an attack roll with disadvantage. So roll two d twenty and then get, uh, take the lower of the two rolls. Six. Six total is not going to hit. So after uh, after Shlomo and um, and the goblin run in and try and take it out, you see her go through the door, fire an arrow, and it kind of careens off a little wildly. It's probably just a little too dark in the room. So what would you like to do? I, I, I walk in, and then I, I attempt to cast Sleep. Where, sleep? Sleep. Where the, uh, I tap four blue mana. I cast Tap sleep. four blue mana. Um, and I tap cast Sleep creatures, in yeah. the radius where the, um, I guess Shlomo can get it too. He's, he's been sleepy today, today anyway. He's already, uh, he's already been asleep. It's fine. So in the radius where Shlomo and the robot are with the attempt to put the goblin inside to sleep. All right. Uh, so casting time is one action. Um, so you're, you're saying that it's going to be uh, around that area. Uh, you know that it's about a 20-foot area from where you're choosing. So more than likely, Shlomo might get caught up in this if you try That's to do That's fine. <laughs> he could use a nap anyway. All right. Uh, can you roll me 5d8? 5d8? Yep. I can. Hold. Six. Eighteen. Uh, 26. All right. So you're able to... Uh, cast your spell, and it affects uh, a decent amount of people, or a decent amount of creatures around. Uh, you see Shlomo kind of uh, uh, slump down, but then you see the, um, the the rig itself kind of start to to uh, collapse a little bit, like the, the weight of it just kind of stops. Um, and as soon as you do that, suddenly... Out from behind the boxes, a goblin appears and attacks you. Does this goblin look special in any way? Perhaps Not holding an enchanted in dagger. Not special in any way. He doesn't have uh, dirt on his your, back, does he? What is your armor class? Uh, AC 11. All right. Uh, I'm taking damage, aren't I? Oh, yeah. You are taking three points of damage as this goblin jumps up from behind some of the crates and attacks you with a, a scimitar. And then, uh, Vanessa, what is your armor class? 14. Oh. 14. All right. You also take three points of damage as another one jumps out from behind another box near where you're at. And then you see across the room a third one jump out from behind a box. Uh, that's about 20 feet across the, the way from you. You see him slump down, but then the machine stops moving, and then you see uh, your friends across the room, they're being attacked by others of your kin. In Goblin, I shout stop. Uh, they do not stop. Uh, <laughs> Vanessa, it is your turn. Or no, I'm, no, it is Vanessa's turn. I'm sorry, I had Steven and Vanessa in the wrong order. What would you like to do? There's a goblin right in front of you. It just attacked you. I'm going to jump back and try to shoot my longbow at him. Uh, you will have to or... take... You will take... Uh, they'll, they'll get an opportunity to attack you if you try and get away from them in within uh, melee combat. Then I will pull out my two short swords. Okay. These right. two short swords? Yep. These two, sh These two short, short swords two right short here. Swords. They're pretty long swords, I got to oh. say. I'm tall. Uh, so. Go ahead and fair, go fair. ahead and make an attack with okay. your short sword. Uh, what is that? Uh, so roll roll a d20. Roll a d20. And add your short sword to it. Did it give you the weapon modifier uh, there? Yeah. Uh, looks like plus three. Uh, so yeah, but I think short sword is uh, your strength plus something plus the weapon itself. Well. You rolled a you rolled a two naturally, is that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's rough. Okay, so you you whiff. That might be our highest roll of the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're doing great. We're today, quite everybody. the level one adventurers today. <laughs> All right, so you you are unable to actually uh, damage this goblin. You, um, 
And Steven, it is your turn. You see uh, her swing, like pull out a short sword and swing at the goblin that's right there. Uh, so you scream out, stop it, and none of these, go- n- n- they're not stopping at all. They're, they seem determined. I, I, I scream out, get to the mech! <laughs> so you hear Agent 26 yell yeah. about the... I, I walk up to the mech. Okay, so uh, you're like able to walk up saunter. to it, and Shlomo is just passed out on the floor near you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think please, please don't make, shock me again. Go, go ahead and make an athletics check to see if you can climb it. So minus one. Yeah, baby. I rolled a twenty, but it's a nineteen. No, oh, it's, it's a natural twenty. You rolled a natural twenty. Yeah. You oh, a nice. 20. So we get to give another run away. Woo! I'm very athletic. Don't let my goblin frame. All right. Uh, this, the, this thing was built to be climbed yeah, by goblins. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. This Five, eight, four, nine, seven, four. Anybody? Five, eight, four, nine, seven, seven. Yay! Yay. Another happy winner. Well, hopefully happy. Hopefully. If you're sad after winning something, <laughs> you must give it back. All right, so it just, uh, yeah, it's... Okay, so um, what was your athletics check? Natural 20? Natural All right, you're 20 able to minus, climb up yeah. uh, towards the cockpit, and inside you can see uh, a goblin that you recognize from the description seems to probably be Cranko. And he's asleep? Just sleeping. I attempt to pull him out. All right, uh, there's no, like, safety harness in this thing, so uh, you're able to pull him out. Do you want to, like, take him out and put him on the ground or throw him on the ground? I want to put him on the ground. All right. Take him out. So him. this is going to take your full action to uh, to disengage him from basically the the, the cockpit area. So uh, after as you're doing that, uh, Gavin, it, it comes to you. You've got a goblin right in front yep. of you that looks not very happy at you. Uh, how far away is the mech? Uh, from you, it's about fifty feet. Will I fit in it? Uh, it'll be a very tight squeeze. Uh, I run to the mech and attempt to get into it. Uh, you can run up to the mech, and then uh, that's going to take your full action because it's 50 feet away from you. Okay. So you have to make a double move. Okay. Uh, to, is, there, is there an attack of opportunity? There is an attack of opportunity when you try and... You can disengage instead and then make a move, a regular move, 30 feet as your action. All right, I'll do that. Okay, so you can disengage uh, from, the act- the, from the goblin who's wildly flailing at you. Uh, you're able to dodge out of the way, and then you walk. You you, you go the, the the thirty feet towards the the mech. So, yep. Great. Uh, it's going to chase you. The goblin. Yes. It sounds reasonable. So the goblin is going to chase after you. It runs up to you and then attempts to attack. Uh, what was your armor class again? Eleven. You are going to take another three points of damage. Great. Twenty-six. Uh, I need you to fight back. And then Vanessa, what was your armor class again? Fourteen. Uh, this one misses you. So this one flails at you with the uh, with another scimitar. Uh, the th- the third goblin from across the room sees you trying to go towards this thing, and he's gonna run towards the the mech to try and intervene as well. And he sees he sees uh, uh, Steven as well trying to take Krenko out of the the cockpit there. But it's it can only run, and then it becomes um, Steven's turn or uh, Vanessa's turn. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll try to uh, shoot the goblin that's chasing Agent 26 in the back while he's running. Okay, you do have a goblin right near you still. Mm. I'll try to hit that one yeah. with my short swords. All right, go ahead and roll your attack roll. Uh, it's a natural a one. one. Natural one? Ah, <laughs> oh, man. All right, so... You should stick to bows. <laughs> You attempt to swing at this uh, this this goblin, and uh, its its scimitar looks uh, like locks up with your sword at just the wrong angle, and so uh, they're they're kind of locked up, and you're uh, you're gonna have to take a, a minute to try and get it untangled. So as that happens, it goes to Steven's turn. Do we do we take a book back when we roll a natural one? Is that do you take a what? Do we take one of the take take one of the books back? Yeah, <laughs> it feels yeah. like. Uh, hmm. <laughs> All right, so it, it goes to Steven's turn. Do I have Prinko on the ground? Uh, 
during this turn, you can you can uh, take your action to uh, come down from the pit and then like put him on the ground. Yeah. What do I do? So I have him like he's cradled in my arms. Yes. Okay. Krenko is cradled in your arms. Um. And I can't get in the suit with Krenko in my arms. No. All right, I, I take him down. All right, so you take him down uh, and you put him on the ground next to Shlomo, sleeping all all yep. sleepy and tenderly. That's correct. All right. And then I try to chilling touch the goblin chasing Agent 26. You're trying to chilling touch? Chill touch, chill touch. Uh, you, you actually cannot do that because your action was to take Krenko out. So you can move. I can move. Yeah. Or do nothing. Uh, yes, or do nothing. You can move to... You can make a... Uh... No, you can, you, you can just move. That's, that's right. it. Right. Can you use Krenko as a hostage? Yes. So I Ooh. shout in Goblin, take another step, and Krenko gets it. Oh, okay. So you do that, and uh, you can see the other three actually kind of hesitate. The one that's running towards you slows itself down. The one that's uh, that's that's fighting with Vanessa is is also kind of like uh. So um, that happens. It goes to Gavin's turn. Um, this one has been it is back up towards you. Just so you know. So, so it's currently on me. Yeah. What a jerk. Um, h- how well can I see what's the inside of that cockpit? Uh, it's still pretty dim, but like you can see a bunch of levers kind of poking out of it, but that's about it. Can I like mage hand to try and control it? Uh, you're not gonna know exactly what anything does. Well, that's just how the goblins planned it, right? <laughs> uh, I cast Ray of Frost on the goblin that's chasing me. Okay. Uh, is that an attack? It's, it's an attack spell, yeah. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and roll. Yep, roll the hit, right? Yep. It's going to be an 18 to hit. Uh, that hits. And then we're going to deal 1d8 of cold damage. Yep. Uh, so only one point of cold damage, unfortunately. Uh, but, but it should slow him as well, given Ray of Frost. Yes. That is going to happen. And can I move as well after casting? Uh, yeah, that was your action, so you can move. I'll move toward the mech. Okay, so you're able to walk all the way to the mech and uh, and... and get up towards it and you can see <laughs> you can see your compatriot uh, one of them sleeping on the ground on the job again and the other Moros, am I right? <laughs> and the other one is uh, is is holding uh, I have a dagger I have a dagger yeah holding a dagger to the throat of a sleeping goblin that you feel like might be Krinko based on description mm-hmm. and so you're, you're able to get up there so uh, it goes to their turns and uh they're, they're kind of stunned, so um, the one is going to struggle. Can you make a strength check, Vanessa? Yes. Natural 20. Ooh. Oh, 20. Rolled a 20? A 20. A Another 20! Yay. We're just going to give all the books away. Woo! So many books, so little time. All right. 5, 8, 4, 9, 6, 9. Hey, there we go. Yay. Woo! Good work on the 20s, everybody. Nice. Yeah, yeah three of them. All right, so you're able to uh, oppose, like, he's trying to overpower and, like, kind of get your sword out of your hand with, uh, with, with trying to struggle with his scimitar, but you're able to, um, to oppose that, and uh, you're actually able to free your sword from the, the entanglement. So uh, the one that's following you uh, has stopped... And uh, looks over at, at, at Steven's character and just kind of, don't do anything stupid. Well, I don't want to kill him, so it's my turn now? Uh, yeah, it goes to you. Actually, yes, it goes to Vanessa, sorry. Uh, can I... I'll, I'll try to hit this goblin again that's right in front of me. You're going to try and hit it again? Yeah. All right, uh, go ahead and roll an attack. Third time's the charm. Here we go. Third time was not the charm. <laughs> That's a six. Uh, what do I add? Uh, six plus four, so it's a nine. Nine total is not going to hit it. But 
it does kind of flinch back from you and tries to like you know actually dodge instead of like actively trying to like fight against you with it. Um, so then it goes to Steven's turn. How do you want to do this? So how asleep is Shlomo at this point? Uh, how asleep is Shlomo? Yeah. Resting soundly. A Agent 26 is a powerful mage. And, and I'm, bes <laughs> I'm beside him, right? Uh, yeah, yours. With a flourish of my hand, I shock and touch Shlomo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not again. Can you please roll damage? <laughs> Uh, D8, hold on. You know you don't have to shocking touch him. You can just, like, kick him a little. I roll a three. Back, uh, you okay. take three points of sh electric damage again. This is da it's a dangerous mission going out <laughs> with your adopted brother. <laughs> Does he wake up? He wakes up. Wake. Shlomo wakes up. I groggily swing my sword. Oh, it's not my action. <laughs> yeah. I will be groggily swinging my sword, though. Yes. Uh, well, it does, it does become your turn right away. Oh, oh wonderful. I... I swing my sword wildly. All right. Uh, roll me an attack roll. Uh, 19. I had this somewhere. There it is. Don't, don't hit Krenko. Don't hit Krenko. Please don't I, hit Krenko. I have no idea who I'm going to hit. High or low? Uh, I'll, say, I'll say high. All right. So... Uh, you swing your sword wildly and uh, go ahead and roll me damage. Eight. As your sword cracks into the, uh, the, the rig itself, you hear a clang and you take like a pretty, like your sword had dug in pretty well into the leg there. Oh, my sword is always getting stuck. <laughs> yes. All right. It then goes to Gavin's turn after that. Shlomo of the stuck sword. <laughs> All right. So we've got... It's Krenko. Uh, I, can I perceive it's, it's Krenko? Uh, can you proceed as Krenko? No, can I perceive it's Krenko? Are, are, am can I you sure it's Krenko? perceive it? Uh, like, you're pretty sure based on the description that was given to you in the dossier, yes. It's Krenko? Yeah. So at this point, we just want to escape. So um, these guys are in the same spot. I, ru I run over to them and then with start facing toward the goblins and backing up out of the building. Okay. Uh, as you back up, you're able to get to the opening in the door pretty easily um, and nothing seems amiss so. but we uh, can't leave we can't leave our ranger friend behind yeah it goes to the she, goblins turns after that and so the one that is with um, the one that's going against uh, Vanessa right now can you go ahead and roll me an attack roll against it it's going to try and get away from you he's one Fifteen. Fifteen? Okay, that's going to hit, so uh, roll me some damage. That should be... So we should roll D8. One. Okay. Uh, it should be yeah, a little bit more than that. It should be, it should be plus four. Did four you? total? Yeah. So you dump it? All right. So the, the goblin that was oh, facing you obviously doesn't want anything to happen to its boss, so it tries to run away from you, and you're able to kind of like cut it right as it's right as it's trying to flee so it runs and uh you can tell that it runs into the um into the office like right as soon as it gets away from you uh the one that was stunned by you starts to to run up as well to see what's going on and then it becomes uh steven's turn or i'm sorry vanessa's turn sorry out of order here uh i'm gonna walk towards the party you're gonna walk towards them all right, so there is the one goblin. Uh, no, there's two goblins. One is currently uh, trying to uh, follow Gavin, and the other one was near the rig. So you just go ahead and uh, uh, you you kind of walk around it, I assume. Yeah. Okay, so you walk around. You're able to get to the the hole in the wall as well within your movement speed. So then it goes to Shlomo. I, is my sword still stuck in the, uh, the neck? It, it's not really stuck. You were able to get it out pretty easily. Oh, I've retrieved my sword? Yeah, yeah. Great. I, I head towards Agent 26 in the door. All right, so there is a goblin on the other side of the rig there that is oh. probably going to attack I, if you unless you disengage. I, I attempt to grapple him. You attempt to grapple. Okay, roll <laughs> me a strength check. Six. 
All right, so this goblin grapples you. <laughs> no, I think that uh, when you're attempting to grapple, it just gets away from you. Yeah, since yeah, it won yeah, the, yeah. the encounter. So it gets away from you. Uh, it, 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 you're, you're just like still kind of groggy from the sudden sleep that you did, the sudden nap you just took. I spent most you, of the adventure now. So napping, apparently yes. Shlomo's a bit of a narcoleptic, and nobody knew that going into the adventure. Shlomo, Shlomo Jr. Jr. just keeps yeah. collapsing and passing out for some period of time. Nobody knows why. Definitely not any sort of mage trickery here. <laughs> uh, and then it comes to Steven's turn. I, I take my shirt off, and I restrain Krinko with it. You take your shirt off? I mean, that's all I got. I don't you sure you don't have a you rope? Don't, don't have a it says I can have a crossbow, a light, a dagger, a dart, a quarter staff, and a sling. I use my sling. There you go. To restrain Krinko. Okay, you use your sling. Uh, make me a dexterity check. So you just roll that plus the what's in the dexterity box. D twenty plus the uh, on the left side there. Uh, Twelve. All right. Since it's since Krinko's unconscious, you're able to bind it pretty well. Uh, bind his arms pretty well. Um, but there is another goblin that's starting to come towards you since it notices that you're not actually, like, threatening Krenko anymore. Uh, so it comes to, to Gavin's turn, though. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I am going to... So which goblins can I see at this point? Uh, so there's one that ran into the office. Yeah. There's one that and is... I can't see that one anymore. No, you can't see that one okay. anymore. There is one that is uh, around the backside of the, the machine that uh, Shlomo Jr. attempted to grapple, and it dodged out of the way. And then there's one that's actually coming towards uh, Steven's character. All right, I'm going to magic missile the one that's coming towards Steven. Magic missile. All right, go ahead and roll your, your uh, damage that's rolls. It's an auto hit, right? It's an auto hit, it's yes. it's D4, correct? It is a D4, yes. I, I do not have a D4. What about, what? What about a D8? D8, D8's also work, but D4 it is. And it's, and it's how many D4? One D4? Uh, I think it's just one D4, one D4 at first level. level. Yeah. Pew! Four damage. Woo. Yay. Yay! That's a lot. Take that, goblin. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> take that, Magic comma, missile. goblin. Three glowing Better. darts. A dart deals 1d4 plus one. Oh, so take five. Take five. All right, that one takes five points of damage, and it does not look good. It, it, looks, it looks real hurt. Uh, so then it becomes their turn. The goblin that is near Shlomo attempts to attack Shlomo. What is your armor class? 16. And it also flails wildly at you and does mm. not seem to get a hit in. Uh, the one that was just hit by, by you uh, runs up to you and attempts to make an attack since you're distracted uh, tying up uh, what you perceive to be Krenko. What's your armor class? 12. All right. It also fails horribly uh, as it's... It wildly swings a scimitar near you. That. Time to take another book back, I see. Yeah, time to take another book. No, it was not. It was a two, not a one. All right. It was pretty close, though. Uh, it then becomes Vanessa's turn. Where where are they in relation to me now? Okay, so there are there's one that is about 20, uh, 30 feet away from you that is tangling with uh, Shlomo okay. Jr. right now. And there is another one that is about 30 feet away that is just on the other side of the mechanical, the, the machine, the rigging, uh, that it just attempted to attack uh, Steven's character. Okay. I'm going to try to shoot that one with a bow. Okay. So go ahead and make me an attack roll. With, uh, what is it? 19. 19. Uh, I believe shooting in the melee has a disadvantage now. So go ahead and roll another one. 15. That still hits. So go ahead and roll me damage. Okay. Yep. Eight. Eight. Wow. That thing uh, takes a big old arrow to the back and falls flat on the floor. You have defeated that goblin. I used to be a goblin, but I took what, an you, arrow to the back. Yes, it took an arrow to the back of the head, apparently. Is it my turn yet? <laughs> it is going to be Shlomo Jr.'s turn after that. I'm willing to attack the goblin I'm standing right next to. All right. Go ahead and roll your attack roll. 18. All right. That hits. Go ahead and roll your damage. Uh, 11. 
That's a lot of damage. So All that right. one is super dead. We were just bluffing before. Yeah. Now, All right. now, All right. now, now, we now, now for serious, it's yes. that one's super dead. All right. So um, the two goblins that were actual threats are no longer there. So uh, that that means that initiative is kind of out. So right. you you have Cranko tied up. What would you like to do? I want to cut his ear off. What? <laughs> I want to cut his ear off. <laughs> Vincent Van Krenko. <sighs> I, want a, I want a souvenir from my adventure. All right. <laughs> roll your damage. This, this could go so badly. <laughs> so do I roll a d20? No, you combat? don't have to. He's incapacitated. <laughs> so this I roll a d20. not going to go well. He's going to wake up. Yeah, but he's restrained. I'm sure it's going to be fine. A three. All right, Krinko takes three points of damage. And, and loses an ear. And loses an ear. And wakes up yelling, Ah! What are you doing? I'm cutting your ear off. <laughs> ah, why? Uh, you're wanted by the Azorius. What does that have to do with my ear? They just said alive. <laughs> they didn't say anything about having both ears. All right, as you're having this conversation and Krinko is yelling, all of a sudden from the office comes the other goblin wielding what looks to be a, uh, uh, let's say an incendiary device of some sort. He comes out screaming his head off. Sees Krinko's ear in my hand. Yeah, sees Krinko's ear in his hand, stops suddenly. Uh, Steven, lower high. Oh, uh, I'm short high. All right, as the goblin <laughs> runs out, sees Krenko standing there, or sees you standing there with Krenko's ear and just, like, goblin blood going down his, his arm, uh, he erupts into, an, like, a gout of flame, an explosion, <laughs> just standing there. And uh, once the, the noise and the, the, the shock of bright white light subsides, uh, yeah, you don't see a goblin standing there anymore. <laughs> I, I clap. Bravo, bravo. <laughs> Good Rakdos act. <laughs> These are still the bards, right? Uh, not, no, not anymore. Uh, so, all right, let's that, get back and return that, this that guy. That may have been one of, um, one of her, uh, what's her names? Um, blanking on her name all of a sudden. Falish? Falish. Oh, yeah. That might have been one of Falish's special surprises for these goblins. All right, so you, you have Kranko. We got Let, him. Let's turn him in. You, I agree. Let's turn him can in. Can you add into your inventory one Cranko ear? Yeah. Where do I do that at? Uh, just put one it ear? in your inventory wherever. Uh, also now, in lore, Cranko only has one ear. So if you could, next time you, you guys make a card. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we'll tap, create one ear token. Yes. All right. So uh, you know that the assigned place. Um, you know what they say. Cranko has his eyes and ears everywhere. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> That's terrible. All right, so you knew the assigned place to meet up after everything was... Oh, that's the catwalk. We don't need that anymore. It's probably the jail, yeah? Uh, no, it is actually a silo near uh, Granary. Let me double check here. Search... Silo, old, granary, those old, are kind of the same old. thing. Ah, here we go. All right, so... You know that, uh, that Nasius had wanted you to, be, to take him to an old granary on the outskirts of the Ted district, so... Uh, what would you like to do with Cranko now that you have him? T take him to the granary? Okay. Let's go to the granary. Which is the most scary thing anyone's ever said. <laughs> On the way to the greenery. All right, so you want to... Does everyone agree? Go to the greenery? Yeah, yeah you, I, I want to go. Yeah. You want to meet up? All right. So, um, so there's been a light rain that's been going on as you started walking. So as the rain intensifies into a downpour, uh, you head to the outskirts of the 10th district. You're directed to the old greenery that Nassius picked as the rendezvous spot. Uh, the wet, crumbling clay building sits out, out in an untended field and is overgrown with all manner of vegetation, almost completely reclaimed by the wild. Nassius steps out of the entryway into the field, holding a small purse and flanked by two heavily armed guards. 
Uh, I have brought some uh, Azurius uh, guards with me to make sure that this transfer goes okay. But uh, what is your passive perception? Should be written there in the lower uh, left, I believe. 14. 14 as well. 14. 11. Okay. So the three of you actually noticed that uh, even though he said these are Azurius guards, they're... They don't have any guild symbols on them, ob like obvious guild symbols. They just kind of look like people. So, uh, so I see you have. Cri what happened to him? I took his ear. You took. You said alive. I did say alive. Check. We're going to count this as a part of the struggles to get him back. Shall that is we? Correct. That is correct. Okay. So, I have your gold. Hand him over, please. I think I should hand him over, guys? Can we have the gold first? Fine. He throws the bag down in front of you. I go to pick it up. He doesn't stop you. A deal's a deal. Yeah, here, here's, your, here's your goblin. Did he say anything to you at all? Did you interrogate him, or question him? He yelled when we cut off his ear. <laughs> he was asleep before that. He was a, you. Never mind. I have him. That is all I need. Thank you for your services. And he's, with that, he turns around, walks back into the building with the two guards and Krenko in tow, one of the guards holding him. I uh, open the bag. There is a hundred Xenos in there. Better be. <laughs> what was that? It said better be. Better be, yes. So you were able to complete your quest. Yay. And Krenko is in custody again. Congratulations. Yay. Woo. Thank you to everybody who came out tonight. Uh, I know it's not quite as long as we were intending it to be, but uh, we had fun. It's because Krenko got put to sleep. Yeah. We're Good just, job, Agent 26. We're an efficient party. Yes, very efficient we're party. So, efficient. so thank you so much, everybody, for coming out. I hope you enjoy the rest of your SCG Con. And you can find... This adventure, slightly modified, in the uh, Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, which you can pick up. Or you just have a copy, because we gave out like three of them. So, thank yeah. you, everybody. Just keep rolling at home until you roll a 20. We'll, roll we'll come to your house and we'll hand one to you. Remember, he only has one ear left. Yes. I have the other ear. That is, that is canon right now. <laughs>